So any other questions about this stuff? Um, so the other thing I wanted to talk about was a, a project that we did with a graduate student on network mapping. Um, and I guess the purpose of the project was to shed light on some of the social capital of networks and of partnerships in specifically in Toronto East, um, not so much in Toronto East Lip, but in, in Toronto East area. And it did focus on the Lip area because we were the ones that actually um, identified the, the participants. So they were all um, people who had been involved in some way, shape, or form uh, with a Lip or with a network that a Lip was involved in. Um, so, the network diagrams illustrate, um, a, they're basically a visual representation of the partnership, which is what made them really interesting, and I'm going to show you a couple of them. Because the patterns of the network become really obvious on where the gaps are, and it, and it comes obvious to uh, probably, especially funders, how they can better support the coordination of the partnerships. So we surveyed about 150 or 160 individuals who were either on a work group or on the Partnership Council or were involved in another network like the uh, Neighborhood Action Partnership, NAP, or ANC that, that LIP was also a part of. Um, and um, we had about a 64% return rate, which is not bad. It could have been better, but I'll, you'll know why when I tell you what the survey was, why, the, why um, it wasn't as, as high as it could have been. So the survey consisted of two parts. One was just general information about uh, the person, um, who they were, where they worked, uh, a little bit about their agency. And the second part was um, a list of four questions, which is right here. These are the networking questions. And people were asked to, do four, to identify in these four areas. They needed to identify people with whom they were, had a working relationship. Uh, they need to identify people that they look to for new ideas, innovation, and inspiration. Um, identify people that, that have provided support or advice uh, or resources. And to identify people that they would like to work with. So at the, after these, at the end of these four questions were the list of all the people that received the survey. So that was 150. <laughs> 160 people's names with their with their position and their agency and for each of the questions You had to go through each name and click off uh, The people that you knew the people that you worked with the people that you look to for ideas The people providing support and the people that you want to work with in the future So it was a little bit of a long <coughs> survey and um, I think people got frustrated because the list of names was huge, right? Um, and some of them, we tried to do it in a way so that it was easy to identify. We had the agency name first. So if you actually didn't work with that agency, you could just skip it, skip over it. Um, but we tried to make it as easy as possible. But it was quite a long uh, list of names. Um, so here's the first um, map that shows our network. Now it's kind of hard to see the colors, I think. Yeah. So this is... Um, this is basic, this is the current working relationship. So everyone who, who is selected, um, they identify people that they work with currently um, in the, in that, from that list of 150. So you can see there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, different sectors that people work with. It wasn't just immigration, but employment, uh, social services and inclusion, that's civic engagement, community development. Uh, family support, health, mental health, housing, education, and skills, recreation, and culture. So it's quite a wide variety. And you can see that our network was extremely well connected. And there's a, quite a large core in the middle. And here, but the, so right here in the middle, all of these blue uh, little, little squares, this is all, this is the immigration and set, people who identified working in immigration settlement. But there is, in this whole core, quite a variety, diversity of sectors. Um, I, almost all eight of them are here. So there's housing, there's health, mental health, um, there's employment, and uh, there's a green one, education and skills development, and that social inclusion right in the middle. So it was actually quite a diverse group. All these ones around the periphery here, you can see they all only have one line connected to them. And so those were uh, people that at the end of your answering your questions, you were allowed to 
add in people's names. So the, if there was people you wanted to identify that were not on the list, you would write their name in. So this includes those names as well. Um, there was a total of um, 246 people uh, identified, either from the list uh, that people added in, and the list that um, it was originally given out, and a total of 1,466 relationships. So every line um, that's um, here is, is one relationship or one tie from person to person. So that's so, quite. So yes. are these agencies or individuals? They're individuals, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so, so the closer the closer you are to the net, the closer you are to the center, that means the more lines there are to your name. So, the more people identified you, or the more connections that were to your name, were um, that you were closer to the middle of the circle. So it's not surprising that uh, you know immigration settlement. There's it's quite a large number here in the middle because it was sort of. You know, started from um, the LIP project and we were the ones who identified folks. Um, Sandra? Yes. So does this graphic represent uh, people who were identified as those that they looked to for ideas or who are currently providing support? No, this is the working relationship one. So the very first question, okay. who do you have a working relationship with? Um, or you worked with, I think it, who you worked with in the past two years? Yeah. Yeah, all the people with whom you've working, you have a working relationship, or you've worked with regularly in the past two years. So that's the, that's the first general one. Um, so although uh, though this was given also to we we gave the survey all, also to um, LIP staff across the city as well. Uh, so it was not only Toronto East LIP staff, but the LIP staff across the city. Um, so although the LIP staff only represent about 16% of the current relationships, they sustain half of the partnerships here. Okay, so this is, a, this is now a graphic of the desired working relationships, where people want to, who they want to work with. So you can see, not as many people answered this one, there's less squares, but you can see that the core is actually quite large now. So there's actually a lot more people who want to, and all these folks around the periphery now also have not just one line, but two, three, four lines. So it actually indicates that people actually have the desire to work with more folks, and they want to um, connect to the folks that were a, a little bit more isolated on, on the other one. And again, there's quite a variety of sectors here. So immigration, you can see the light blue, but you know, there's education and skills, there's social inclusion, there's, like, there's quite a diverse mix of sectors. Um, so the respondents envisioned twice as many collaboration relationships, and the density, I guess, I mean, this was done through a, a software program, right? So there, it's actually very quite mathematical, but the density of the core is double, what it was in the last one. So it just indicates the type or the desire to have actually more collaboration than what's currently existing. Um, what we did at this point is we, we did a what if scenario. Okay, so what if this was just before uh, the lift was restructured and we decided to think about what would happen if the lift didn't get funded? So what if there was no lift staff? So we did, we ran one with no lift staff. So this is what happened to the network without actually paid staff. Now, and I think both Shona and Alex talked about having a, a paid staff person in a network and the importance of that. And this just illustrates what happens when there isn't actually someone there to, uh, to foster the relationships. Um, 50% of the relationships were unsustainable without paid staff, although the staff only represented 8% of the overall relationships. So without them, the number of relationships that were originally 1,466 uh, became 764. The density of the network dropped uh, 25%, and 19 individuals were actually completely isolated. So you can see these folks have actually have no lines at all. Um, 
the average path length, which indicates how close people are to the core network, actually decreased uh, by 17%, which indicates a much longer time, a much longer time uh, for uh, professionals to connect and to collaborate. Um, and the integration rate, which was basically the average number of the shortest paths, uh, decreased by 64%. Um, in this in this year now you do see here that there are some uh, some some other little hubs or little cores on the outside which is great that's a really that's an indication of a really strong network that you don't actually have only one person in the center that's connected to everyone so there are some um, other uh, folks that are connected to quite a lot of people which is really great but you can see that the density here in the middle is actually quite a lot less So although uh, we are starting over, <laughs> we're starting over as of uh, April 1st, um, we, I think we have a really good sense of uh, the work that we want to do and the direction that we're going. And I think it'd be really great if we could do this again. I'm not sure that we can, but uh, to run this, uh, this project again would be really great. We, are, you know, we did redo the, the, um, the, um, the exercise, the collaboration exercise and with very similar results, which is great because it shows us that we're you know, sort of along, we're on the right path and that it's not a one-off, it is, it is a trend of um, how people want to work together. Um, but we are, uh, we are starting over, so we do actually have some things that we can work off, which is great, but it is, um, at this point, um, just the beginning for us, right, again. <laughs> so that's it, thank you. Um, I have a quick question, oh, and solely because I am unfamiliar with FLIP, this is my mm -hmm. first experience okay. learning or hearing anything about it. Your initial purpose for forming, first of all, how long were you, had, had you been in existence? Yeah, so it was two years. It was two years, two right? Years. Two, and a, two and a half years. Okay, so your initial purpose for forming, has that changed since, or has it evolved since you formed, and what are your common key deliverables with yeah. this? No, the, the purpose is still the same. It's really to uh, coordinate and collaborate with agencies in your area around delivering services to newcomers okay. and to create welcoming communities for people and to um, um, uh, assist newcomers in accessing the labor market. Those are the two big ones. Uh, but it is really about developing partnerships and collaboration. So that hasn't changed really from the first, you know, the first go around to this mer after the merger. It's just bigger now. <laughs> yeah, and, and just I think probably a little bit harder to do just because of the numbers. Like it's just, yeah. And do you have a central spot, or is it just all the different agencies become a member of, and then you meet? Yeah. Well. And, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay. We don't have a. I mean, we have. There's a lead agency, which is St. Stephen's, and then there's in our lift that there's two other agencies that are partner agencies in terms of staffing. So St. Stephen's uh, reports to CIC, and they're the ones that are you know have the the funds and and do all the reporting and all that stuff. And then there's two agencies, Wood Green, uh, which I think I showed you in the in the in the structure is we're doing the. Yeah, the, the partnership and service integration work, and CCBT is doing the newcomer advisory work. And then some of the work and the workers are split off into other, like in between the three. And is this to provide resources to these agencies? Assistance, have, like these groups, what, what is the outcome of the groups, the two groups that you just mentioned, like the newcomer advisory group? What yes. is the outcome from that? Yeah, so they're, they're, they will be um, giving, um, uh, response and feedback to the settlement strategy. So the, our purpose is, our deliverable is to develop a settlement strategy for our area and an action plan. So that all the groups, the work groups and the committees and will respond to any kind of draft that we divide and their input will go into the settlement strategy. And then the agencies would, I guess, is, it, is the intent for the agencies to function in a similar manner? Uh, like from that information as it filters through, filters down, sorry? Yeah, well, I mean, the, the idea for the settlement strategy is actually to be a doable, doable pieces of work, right? So the agencies themselves won't 
don't necessarily get funding to do whatever it is that comes out of the settlement strategy, but they're part of developing it. So, it, and, and it is about collaboration. So if three agencies decide together to get together and, and do a whatever project, then that becomes part of the settlement strategy, but it's not that it comes with any dollars attached to it. Yeah, at this point, I mean, you never know where right. things change. Yeah, any other questions? Oh, I'm curious about your network, all the work you did on tracking your network. Mm -hmm. were, you, um, were you surprised by any of, of central people in your network, or did you or did you feel like you knew who was going to be those central characters? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think we were a little surprised with some of them, I think. Um, certainly there was, I mean, it's, I mean, the ones that were there, obviously, because we sent out the invitations to people, right? So it was all people who were connected to our lit project. But people did indicate others, right? So um, that, was all, that was really good to know because there are people outside of immigration settlement sector, right? Um, so I don't know if we were completely surprised, but I think we were surprised by um, some, the intensity of some of the network and the diversity of it. I think we were surprised to see that there is it's not just about settlement services, that there was quite a variety of I mean, eight, was it eight or nine other sectors 